Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're going to be talking about doing a drop. And what I mean by like a drop is you've got like three to five products that you've been working on and you're going to release all of them all at the same time. And so the, there's different ways that you can go about doing it. I'm just going to explain like how I go about it. So when I first started, I just really just kind of like put together a couple different designs. I was still learning how to draw. Even now today, I'm still learning, but uh, I just kind of did that. And then I looked at all the pieces that I had made and then I kind of decided to like try to write a story around that kind of like in my head. And I never like released the story, but it was just kind of like, OK, like what do all of these things have in common and like how am I going to theme that? Right. But I had a lot of fun doing that. It was like, oh, like this could be a thing that I do. Right. And so the next drop after that, during that time, I had been watching a lot of like Warhammer, like 40K. And so I was like super inspired by that. And so I kind of went into like a vein of, you know, it's in the future and it's like galactic travel. And, you know, there's like this crazy like AI robot, like overlord, you know, this, that and the other. But at the time, it was still taking me like a super long time to draw stuff. And so I only had like three uh, different designs. And I, I went into it thinking like, oh, I'm going to like roughly tell this story across, you know, three designs. Like it just it didn't pan out. So then after that, I had another uh, story that I kind of came up with me and my buddy about this woman who like she was blind. But like what kind of like nightmares does she have? And like this whole like backstory behind that. But like I could never really get that to translate into like t-shirts or you know i couldn't get that to translate into like what it was that i was designing and it got really frustrating and for a little bit of time i thought about oh well like what if i just like write the story out and like post the story on the website but i never sat down and, and did it and i figured no one's gonna read it and so i just had like a really tough time like i always wanted it to be like this one really like cohesive idea for this one design like or one drop right and then the next drop would be like a completely different story and i just i could never never get it going uh so then at that point i kind of started to uh take a step back a little bit and say okay let's kind of keep it more loose and let's kind of like reevaluate theming so the story is that was like the first iteration of like theming the next iteration I did was sort of uh, taking, I don't know, like a overall like broader concept and just kind of putting that for designs. And so for the next drop that I did, it was my like memories series. And so I had found this website that had these like super old, uh, like vintage ads, you know, they were like hand drawn from like the 1700s, 1800s, whatever. So they're all like open source. Uh, there's no copyright at this point just because they're so old. And the guy flew those into Photoshop and like made them kind of weird and kind of creepy. And it was like, okay, cool. Like that is more like concrete. Like it makes more sense. There's not like a, a story to it. It's just, here's three things that have like similar like design elements. And so I was really happy with that. Okay, cool worked on that the next one after that i had been watching uh i'd been watching like bojack horseman and if you haven't seen bojack horseman like it's a phenomenal show but it's it's super depressing and there's one episode where uh it's like a death sequence whatever and and there's this poem called the view from halfway down and basically what the whole poem is about is like this one character had like jumped off of a bridge and in the moment that he's standing on the bridge, he's like, yes, you know, this is what I want to do. Like, I'm ready. And after he jumps and he's halfway down to the water, he realizes that, like, that was, like, the biggest mistake that he could make. And then after that, you know, he, he hits the water and it is what it is. And so, like, that concept of, like, that moment of regret for just that short period of time, like if you could take that one moment and like magnify that and put that on display, that's terrifying, but that that's impactful, you know? And so that was the overarching theme, uh, for that series. And I'm super proud of that. And I only did, I think, you know, three different designs, but I put a lot of time, a lot of effort into it. And I'm, I think it came out phenomenal, but I think that 
taking a, a broad sort of idea like that and blowing that up was super helpful in doing my drops. So I think at this point, I hope that you can kind of see that there's uh, like a, a pattern, right? To like how I'm doing this on the back end. And a lot of it really comes down to like, I let myself be inspired. And for me, I watch a lot of like stuff on YouTube and I get a lot of like recommendations and it's just like random stuff where it's like, hey, YouTube thinks that you're gonna like this. And sometimes you look at it, you're like, ah, I, you know, I don't really know. You know, I don't like on the face, you know, on the surface of it, like, I don't know if I'd really be interested in that. But then you get started watching and you get like locked in and you're like, oh, wow. And every so often you start to kind of see things, uh, you know, like a phrase or, you know, just a couple words or just an idea. And it just like like your mind just explodes with like ideas like oh I could totally do something with that and so for me I, I keep a, a list of uh, notes uh, on my phone and it's just like little phrases little ideas and stuff let me see if I can pull that out real quick all right so this is like the list of like notes that I've got and and literally it's just just a, a few words a few phrases stuff like that and so whenever I'm having like a like writer's block or what have you I'll just go through my phone and I'll see if I can find like a phrase that I wrote down, you know, six months ago, totally forgot about and like it, you know, inspires me. And I'm like, oh, you know, that's actually, you know, I can, I can run with that now. You know, I liked it back then, but I can run with it now. And uh, it, to me, I think it's so cool because like you, you take something that it, it's so small. It's just, you know, this tiny little thing. And you can blow that up into, you know, whatever sort of, you know, design you want. You can blow it up into like a whole drop, a whole theme. And uh, it's, I think it's so much fun just being able to do all that. So we'll talk about uh, the drop that I'm working on right now. And I'll show you guys the inspiration for it. I really hope that you guys are going to think I'm a dork. It's, it's super funny. I love it though. It's so, so good. All right, so these are the three designs that I've got set up right now. Uh, I think I'm going to do one more before I like release everything. So from right to left, we've got greater than the horrors. Um, this is something that I had made before like I went on hiatus. This is like the last piece that I made and then I was gone for like six months and just like didn't draw again. So this isn't necessarily like part of the theme or like part of the idea. In the middle, we've got something called the mass psychosis element, and we're going to figure out where these names came from here in a second. So I was thinking recently about, uh, so like I, I had changed my uh, logo. So before it was, you know, a different font and then it had like anti-suicide slash slash death cult, you know, whatever. And uh, it seemed really busy. I didn't really like it too much. I think I was like at a skate park like months ago and some kid like saw me wearing a shirt that said like anti-suicide death cult. And he was like, isn't that kind of, you know, like counterintuitive. And for some reason that like, it didn't bother me, but like it really made me like think about it. And I was like, you know, yeah, that's kind of being like edge Lord. Like I, I don't want, you know, so you just gotta, over time, you just kind of refine things. And so like, I, I got rid of that stuff, made the new logo. And uh, so now I'm kind of thinking, okay, like what, what do we like really want to like be about? And you know, the idea of like making it mean something, like make your life mean something, I think is pretty cool. So I think that that might be something that we run with. Maybe not, I don't know yet. And then over here on the left, we've got the costumed human hypothesis, which like the name of the shirt makes my toes curl. Like I, I love this. I love this so much. I love the idea of it. Like it is just so sick. And so here we've got a king. He's like the barrel boy, you know, and he's just like draining out all of his water. And then we've got one of those like biblically accurate angels because I've been watching a lot of uh uh, Wendigoon on YouTube that guy kicks ass his stories and everything he's got going on is great so overall there's not necessarily like a, a theme as much as there was with like my last drop so it's just kind of like getting back into drawing getting back into like finding that groove and stuff like that so 
I don't know. Like, I'm not as uh jazzed i'm not as like oh man you know this is like the best thing ever like so i'm i'm so proud of uh the views that it's gonna be a while like i said before i feel like i've topped it but you got to keep going you got to keep pushing and so this is what i got for right now but let me show you guys like where these names came from and like the inspiration and kind of like where i'm leaning towards going with everything but i don't know yet Let's just pull up the video. So I don't know if you guys have seen this video. <laughs> uh, so this is SpongeBob SquarePants Skin Theory. Uh, this is posted by Doug Woolever, Woolever, Woolever. I don't know. We're gonna go ahead and leave a like on that. So <laughs> this has been recommended to me on YouTube for like three months maybe like every so often like i'll open up the app on my tv and it's like dude you know you really want to watch skin theory for spongebob squarepants i'm sitting there like dude what is this and i just i never watched it never watched it and finally you know maybe a couple weeks ago i sat down i was like all right youtube like i'll relent i'll watch it and basically all skin theory is is like theories about why spongebob characters like have like a second layer of skin and so like they'll like take off their like little fish head and there's like a smaller fish head and all sorts of stuff just watch the video it is hilarious it's super fascinating but this part like just drove me up the wall i had to like write it on my phone i was so excited so i'll just let you guys watch it so there isn't just one official interpretation but rather there are multiple sub theories out there this includes the ritual aspect, the mass psychosis element, and the costumed human hypothesis. And yes, those do sound completely insane. But later on in the video, we're going to go into detail regarding all three. So yeah, so like all three of the interpretations uh, are going to be like the names of the t-shirts. But like as soon as I saw like those three things, I was like, oh my god, that's awesome. And the best part is if you if it's like six months down the line you like came to the site and you saw like whoa like the human costumed hypothesis and you're like that sounds sick like that sounds like super scientific and like what theory is that you know i gotta go ahead and google it when you google it the first thing that pops up is spongebob squarepants skin theory and it's just like hell yeah because then you're like wow like third dune is just this goofy goober look at him go <laughs> and I love that. I love, you know, little secret messages. I love little, like, nods here and there. Because, I mean, like, on the surface, you're like, oh, like, that sounds brooding and, and deep and, and dark and mysterious. And then you look it up and you're like, oh, shit, it's just fucking SpongeBob. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, man. I love it. I love stuff like that so much. So I, I guess like the last thing that I would want to talk about is like building on ideas and then how would you go about like marketing? Um, Cause like to me, I, I hate marketing. I hate marketing so much. And there's so many ways to like do it wrong. And there's so many ways that you could do it in a way that like technically it's correct. And you know, technically this is the way that companies would do it. But then it's just like so false and so fake and it just it doesn't it's not fun i just i hate it and so for me i like i have so much fun making these little videos that are like meant to be creepy and they're just weird and you know this that and the other like on instagram you can have like a little like 60 second like horror movie and i love it it's so so good and so now i'm sitting down thinking okay well how am i going to theme this because like the, the working title for the drop on the back end is just skins and so like i can find a whole bunch of uh videos about you know like you know like skin you know people like rubbing elbows or you know whatever uh the biggest thing with that though is like i with thirdoon i will not ever do like sexualized in any sort of way i don't want you know skimpy clothing i don't want you know things out that shouldn't be out or you know whatever like i i'd never want to have my ads look like a victoria's secret model uh you know in lingerie and all that uh i always want it to be respectful 
I don't think that that stuff belongs in like the fashion industry. And then that also goes into, you know, like body standards and like how people want to be perceived because of magazines and marketing. But like, that's a whole other can of worms. Just know that that's kind of where my head's at. And so now it's like, okay, well, if we've got skins and it's, if we're going to make it loosely like skin related, well, like, how can we do that in like a non, uh, you know, sexualized way where it's more like uncomfortable or like kind of creepy. And so I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I think I'm going to have fun with it. So make sure you follow the Instagram. I'm sure it'll come out eventually. I don't know. I'll figure this out. I think I still got to make just like the one more design. I might make a hoodie or something. I don't know. Oh, I'll, I'll show you guys all that. The very last thing that I would say for you guys is like over time, as you're going through this process of like creating a brand, creating identity, um, finding your style, things like that. The biggest thing to know is you're going to make a lot of mistakes in the beginning, but you're going to like refine the process. And I don't remember who said this quote and I'm sure that I'm going to butcher it, but there was this, uh, you know, uh, artist he would make like angels and stuff out of like granite and marble whatever and apparently the quote was you know you, you take this giant slab of you know granite or marble and he said you know the angel is already in there I just gotta like break him out right and like with a lot of things in life it could be sort of equated to uh, oh what is that even art style even called Sculptures. <laughs> there we go. Sculptures. Good lordy. Uh, it's it's very early in the morning. I'm trying to like wake up super early and, and be proactive in life. But yeah, so I think a lot of things in life could be kind of related back to like sculptures and stuff like that, where you start off like very rough. And over time, you just add more detail and you, you take away a little bit more material over time, a little bit more, a little bit more until eventually it's this like beautiful, you know, masterpiece. Everything's to proportion and stuff. And all this is, it's, it's the same sort of thing. You're going to start off really rough and it's not going to be perfect and it's not going to look good but you're going to make these mistakes and you're going to carve away and, and little by little until you end up with, you know, some crazy awesome thing at the very end of it. And so definitely like, don't be afraid to look back on your old stuff and say, wow, like what was I thinking? I was, I was being so goofy. Uh, but in the moment I thought that I was on the right path and so much of like this YouTube channel and like everything that I want to do is sort of show you like the sculpting process of like, how do you make something in life you know like how do you make something of yourself because i mean we're sculpting ourselves as well right sculpt the life that we have and uh it's not always going to be perfect or refined or pretty you know you're gonna lop off a whole part of clay that you're not supposed to and you're gonna have to smack it back on and that's okay we're we're learning and we're doing this together and we're we're having fun and, and that's the most important part is that we're enjoying every day we're having fun so i appreciate you guys watching uh 